but you can play high um, with without very much pressure, and you can slur from low to high and all these things very easily if you learn to coordinate the bottom lip controlling the length of the upper lip. And it's, I don't know if it's a new concept, but it's not one we hear very often. Questions on that? Yeah, exercises. I do. I have exercises, and uh, the exercises don't really require abstract thinking at all. I'll show you real quick. Um, I'll just play a little bit, a couple of lip slurs. I've only played like two minutes today, really soft. I don't really practice anymore because I don't have time. So I apologize if it doesn't sound good, but um, I'll do my best to do some lip slurs so you can hear what I'm doing, and I'll correlate that to what's happening with my lips. What I'm going to do is play low, and then I'll slur higher. And as I go higher, keep in mind, the breaking point is usually around G in the staff for me, and I figured that out a long time ago. But when I get to G in the staff, then my upper lip is creating all the, the standing wave itself. In other words, the bottom lip is not the one that vibrates. So after G in the staff, which is the second note I slur, or the first note I slur to, because I'll start on a C, then everything else is my upper lip vibrating. And as it's vibrating faster and faster, the length of the vibrating surface is getting smaller because my bottom lip creates that little valley. It just pinches very small. So it starts out, my bottom lip is kind of like this, and it just literally gets smaller. My hand can't do what I'm trying to say, but um, it's almost like half of a drawstring. It just gets smaller and smaller until eventually the two, the two ends of my bottom lip create a very <coughs> tiny little point on the upper lip. At the same time, I'm increasing the air speed, but I decrease the air volume. What that means is I let less air out as I go higher, but I speed the air up, almost as if, um, I hate to use the hose analogy everyone uses, because it's not like that, but it is. When you um, create a smaller opening on the hose, forget the thumb part, however you want to do it with a nozzle or something, then less water comes out, but it definitely goes a lot further. That's what I'm doing. All right, so I'll play a few things, and then we'll compare the horns, um, and I'll also compare some mouthpieces, and then I probably spend way too much time talking, but if you have questions, let me know. All right, so here's a lip slur. Um, again, just think of everything I just said from low to high. That break from C to G is my bottom lip vibrating to the, the upper lip. And if you want to play really low pedal tones, there are a couple ways to do that. You could vibrate one or both of the lips, so we avoid those entirely. But just know, Typically for most players, around G up to C in the staff and lower is your bottom lip. We can all play that pretty easily because the bottom lip is the easy one. After that, that's where we really have to work. So I have this rule that you should never play higher than you can slur from a low C. Or in other words, if I can only slur C to C, then I should only play the C. If I try to slur to the E above it and I miss it, ah, I tried to miss it. But um, if I missed it, then I should, that day, or until I can slur that, I should not play up that high. You should only play as high as you can slur. If you do this, and you like make this kind of your mantra, and say every day, I'm not gonna play any higher than I can slur this day, you will probably not have pressure problems anymore. Avoid thinking about using less pressure, because it rarely works. Just only play as high as you can slur. So, you should be able to slur as high as your range. You should be able to do that if you're going to play those notes. Otherwise, I kind of feel like you have no business playing them unless you want to sustain damage to your embouchure, your lips, your teeth even. When I was in high school, I started taking trumpet very seriously, and I didn't understand any of this, and I used a lot of pressure. And after one summer, I went to the dentist because my teeth were loose, and I learned the hard way. I created a pressure problem that lasted for about eight years. And the reason I'm so set on this rule is because I've been through the worst of the worst. I'm the guy that just kept on going and insisted on being a performance major and performing for a living with a bad embouchure. <laughs> and it's a bad idea. But um, I'm just one of those people who wasn't going to give up. And if you're playing trumpet, you'll probably have some of that in you too. Um, so again, I'm going to play some more lip slurs so you can hear it. You'll hear me start to warm up a little bit. 
keep in mind all I'm doing is uh, primarily speeding up the air as I go higher, using less air as I go higher, and I control all of that with the bottom note pressing the key to the which is large. And all of these mouthpieces have at least two components in common. This one, compared to the last, has a larger throat, much larger, and a larger backbone. Everything else is the same. projection pattern and the efficiency. And thank you for bringing the horns here. All right, looks like a king, silver player. Very nice looking horn. Mm. Yeah, that's nice. Is this from the 70s? Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, my first mouthpiece bottoms out, but I'll play it anyway. Thanks again for coming.